Vilnius is the capital of Lithuania and its largest city, with a population of 588,412 as of 2021. The population of Vilnius's functional urban area, which stretches beyond the city limits, is estimated at 706,832, while according to the Vilnius Territorial Health Insurance Fund, there were 732,421 permanent inhabitants as of October 2020 in Vilnius City and Vilnius District municipalities combined. Vilnius is in southeastern Lithuania and is the second largest city in the Baltic states. It is the seat of Lithuania's national government and the Vilnius District Municipality. Vilnius is classified as a Gamma Global City according to GAWC studies, and is known for the architecture in its old town, declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. Before World War II, Vilnius was one of the largest Jewish centers in Europe. Its Jewish influence has led to its nickname, the Jerusalem of Lithuania. Napoleon called it, the Jerusalem of the North, as he was passing through in 1812. In 2009, Vilnius was the European capital of culture, together with Linz, Austria. In 2021, Vilnius was named among top 25 FD's global cities of the future, one of the most forward-thinking cities with the greatest potential in the world. Etymology and other names. The name of the city originates from the Vilnia River, from the Lithuanian for ripple. The city has also had many derivative spellings in various languages throughout its history. Vilna was once common in English. The most notable non-Lithuanian names for the city include Polish, Wilno, Belarusian, Vilna, German, Wilna, Latvian, Vilna, Ukrainian, Vilno Yiddish. A Russian name from the time of the Russian Empire was Vilna, although Vilnius is now used. The names Wilno, Wilna and Vilna were also used in older English, German, French and Italian language publications when the city was one of the capitals of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and an important city in the Second Polish Republic. The name Vilna is still used in Finnish, Portuguese, Spanish, and Hebrew. Wilna is still used in German, along with Vilnius. The neighborhoods of Vilnius also have names in other languages, which represent the languages spoken by various ethnic groups in the area. According to legend, Grand Duke Gediminas was hunting in the sacred forest near the valley of Sventaragus, near where the Vilnia River flows into the Neris River. Tired after the successful hunt of a wizent, the Grand Duke settled in for the night. He fell soundly asleep and dreamed of a huge iron wolf standing on top a hill and howling as strong and loud as a hundred wolves. Upon awakening, the duke asked the Krivis Liz Dika to interpret the dream. The priest told him, what is destined for the ruler and the state of Lithuania, is thus. The iron wolf represents a castle and a city which will be established by you on this site. This city will be the capital of the Lithuanian lands and the dwelling of their rulers, and the glory of their deeds shall echo throughout the world. Therefore, Gediminas, obeying the will of the gods, built the city, and gave it the name Vilnius, from the Vilnia River. History. Early History and Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Historian Romas Batura identifies the city with Veruda, one of the castles of Mendogas, who was king of Lithuania after coronation in 1253. During the reign of Grand Dukes Butvidis and Vitenis, a city started emerging from a trading settlement and the first Franciscan Catholic Church was built. Vilnius is the historic and present-day capital of Lithuania. Archaeological findings indicate that this city was the capital of the Kingdom of Lithuania and later that of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. After Lithuania formed a dual confederation with the Kingdom of Poland, Vilnius still remained as Lithuania's capital. The city was first mentioned in written sources in 1323 as Vilna, when the letters of Grand Duke Gediminas were sent to German cities inviting Germans to settle in the capital city, as well as to Pope John XXII. These letters contain the first unambiguous reference to Vilnius as the capital. Old Trakai Castle had been the earlier seat of the court of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Vilnius' location offered practical advantages. It lay in the Lithuanian heartland at the confluence of two navigable rivers, surrounded by impenetrable forests and wetlands. At the time of the 14th century, Lithuania was continuously invaded by the state of the Teutonic Order. The future King of England Henry IV spent a full year of 1390 supporting the unsuccessful siege of Vilnius by Teutonic Knights with his 300 fellow knights. During this campaign he bought captured Lithuanian women and children and took them back to Königsberg for their conversion. 
King Henry's second expedition to Lithuania in 1392 illustrates the financial benefits of these guest crusaders to the order. His small army consisted of over 100 men, including longbow archers and six minstrels, at a total cost to the Lancastrian purse of 4,360 pounds. Despite the efforts of Bolingbroke and his English crusaders, two years of attacks on Vilnius proved fruitless. Vilnius was the flourishing capital of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, the residence of the Grand Duke. Gediminas expanded the Grand Duchy through warfare along with strategic alliances and marriages. At its height it covered the territory of modern-day Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Transnistria, and portions of modern-day Poland and Russia. His grandchildren Vytautas the Great and Jagaila, however, fought civil wars. During the Lithuanian Civil War of 1389-1392, Vytautas besieged and razed the city in an attempt to wrest control from Jagaila. The two Gediminids cousins later settled their differences. After a series of treaties culminating in the 1569 Union of Lublin, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was formed. The Commonwealth's rulers held two titles, Grand Duke of Lithuania and King of Poland. In 1387, Jagaila acting as a Grand Duke of Lithuania and King of Poland, granted Magdeburg rights to the city. The city underwent a period of expansion in the 16th century. The Wall of Vilnius were built for protection between 1503 and 1522, comprising nine city gates and three towers, and Sigismund II Augustus moved his court there in 1544. Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Vilnius growth was due in part to the establishment of Alma Academia at Universitas Vilnensis Societatis IESU by the Polish King and Grand Duke of Lithuania Stephen Batory in 1579. The university soon developed into one of the most important scientific and cultural centers in the region and the most notable scientific center of the Commonwealth. During its rapid development, the city was open to migrants from the territories of the Crown of the Kingdom of Poland, Grand Duchy and further. Many languages were spoken. Polish, German, Yiddish, Ruthenian, Lithuanian, Russian, Old Church Slavonic, Latin, Hebrew, and Turkic languages. The city was compared to Babylon. Each group contributed uniquely to the city's life and crafts, trade, and science prospered. The 17th century brought a number of setbacks. The Commonwealth was involved in a series of wars, collectively known as the Deluge. During the Thirteen Years' War, Vilnius was occupied by Muscovite forces, it was pillaged and burned, and its population massacred. During the Great Northern War it was looted by the Swedish army. An outbreak of bubonic plague in 1710 killed about 35,000 residents. Devastating fires occurred in 1715, 1737, 1741, 1748, and 1749. The city's growth lost its momentum for many years, but even despite this fact, at the end of the 18th century and before the Napoleon Wars, Vilnius, with 56,000 inhabitants, entered the Russian Empire as its third largest city. In the Russian Empire, the fortunes of the Commonwealth declined during the 18th century. Three partitions took place, dividing its territory among the Russian Empire, the Habsburg Empire, and the Kingdom of Prussia. Forces led by Jakub Jasinski expelled Russians from Vilnius during the uprising in 1794. Although, after the third partition of April 1795, Vilnius was annexed by the Russian Empire and became the capital of the Vilna Governorate. During Russian rule, the city walls were destroyed, and by 1805 only the Gate of Dawn remained. In 1812, the city was taken by Napoleon on his push towards Moscow, and again during the disastrous retreat. The Grande Armée was welcomed in Vilnius. Thousands of soldiers died in the city during the eventual retreat. The mass graves were uncovered in 2002. Inhabitants expected Tsar Alexander I to grant them autonomy in response to Napoleon's promises to restore the Commonwealth, but Vilnius did not become autonomous, neither by itself nor as a part of Congress Poland. Following the November Uprising in 1831, Vilnius University was closed and Russian repressions halted the further development of the city. Civil unrest in 1861 was suppressed by the Imperial Russian Army. During the January Uprising in 1863, heavy fighting occurred within the city, but was brutally pacified by Mikhail Muravyov, nicknamed the hangman by the population because of the many executions he organized. After the uprising, all civil liberties were withdrawn, and use of the Polish and Lithuanian languages was banned. Vilnius had a vibrant Jewish population. 
According to the Russian census of 1897, out of the total population of 154,500, Jews constituted 64,000. During the early 20th century, the Lithuanian-speaking population of Vilnius constituted only a small minority, with Polish, Yiddish, and Russian speakers comprising the majority of the city's population. On the 4th to the 5th of December 1905, the Great Simas of Vilnius was held in the current Lithuanian National Philharmonic Society building with over 2,000 participants. It was the first modern national congress in Lithuania. The assembly made the decision to demand wide political autonomy within the Russian Empire and achieve this by peaceful means. It is considered an important step towards the act of independence of Lithuania, adopted on 16 February 1918 by the Council of Lithuania, as the Simas laid the groundwork for the establishment of an independent Lithuanian state. World War I During World War I, Vilnius and the rest of Lithuania was occupied by the German army from 1915 until 1918. The Act of Independence of Lithuania, which declared Lithuanian independence without any affiliation to any other nation, was issued in the city on 16 February 1918 with Vilnius as its capital. Regional Turmoil 1918-1920 at the end of 1918 Soviet Russia invaded Lithuania with massive forces, and the Lithuanian army withdrew from Vilnius to the center of the country in order to form a defense line. The German army withdrew together with the Lithuanian government. The self-defense of Lithuania, which was affiliated with the Second Polish Republic, briefly controlled the city and unsuccessfully tried protecting it against the invading Soviet forces. Vilnius changed hands again during the Polish-Soviet War and the Lithuanian Wars of Independence. It was taken by the Polish army, only to fall to Soviet forces again. Shortly after the Red Army's defeat at the 1920 Battle of Warsaw, in order to delay the Polish advance, the Soviet government ceded the city to Lithuania after the signing the Soviet-Lithuanian Peace Treaty on 12 July 1920. The League of Nations became involved in the subsequent Lithuanian self-defense from Poland after it attacked Lithuanian army positions in the southwest of Lithuania. The League brokered the ceasefire called the Sawaki Agreement on 7 October 1920. Lithuanians believed that it stopped a Polish aggression. Although neither Vilnius or the surrounding region was explicitly addressed in the agreement, numerous historians have described the agreement as allotting Vilnius to Lithuania. On 9 October 1920, the Polish army surreptitiously, under General Lukjan Zeligowski, seized Vilnius during an operation known as Zeligowski's Mutiny. The city and its surroundings were designated as a separate state, called the Republic of Central Lithuania. Interbellum. On 20 February 1922 after the highly contested election in Central Lithuania, the entire area was annexed by Poland, with the city becoming the capital of the Wilno Voivodeship. Kanas then became the temporary capital of Lithuania. Lithuania vigorously contested the Polish annexation of Vilnius, and refused diplomatic relations with Poland. The predominant languages of the city were still Polish and, to a lesser extent, Yiddish. The Lithuanian-speaking population at the time was a small minority, at about 6% of the city's population according even to contemporary Lithuanian sources. The Council of Ambassadors and the international community recognized Polish sovereignty over Vilnius region in 1923. Vilnius University was reopened in 1919 under the name of Stefan Batory University. By 1931, the city had 195,000 inhabitants, making it the fifth largest city in Poland with varied industries, such as electorate, a factory that produced radio receivers. World War II Nazi Germany had invited Lithuania to join the invasion of Poland and retake the historical capital Vilnius by force. However, President Antanas Smetona and most of the Lithuanian politicians declined this offer because they had doubts about Adolf Hitler's eventual victory and were outraged by the 1939 German ultimatum to Lithuania. Instead, they supported the neutrality policy and after being encouraged by the French and British diplomats, Lithuania adopted the Neutrality Act, which was supported by all the political forces. World War II began with the German invasion of Poland in September 1939. The secret protocols of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact had partitioned Lithuania and Poland into German and Soviet spheres of interest. On 19 September 1939, Vilnius was seized by the Soviet Union. The Soviets repressed the local population and devastated city, moving assets and factories to the USSR territory, including the major Polish radio factory Electorate, 
along with a part of its labor force, to Minsk in Belarus SSR. The Soviets and Lithuania concluded a mutual assistance treaty on 10 October 1939, with which the Lithuanian government accepted the presence of Soviet military bases in various parts of the country. On 28 October 1939, the Red Army withdrew from the city to its suburbs and Vilnius was given over to Lithuania. A Lithuanian army parade took place on 29 October 1939 through the city center. The Lithuanians immediately attempted to Lithuanize the city, for example by Lithuanizing Polish schools. Just after the beginning of the World War II, on 2 September 1939, the Lithuanian consulate was opened in Vilnius. The consulate was the first in the world to grant visas for life for the Jews and also saved many Polish war refugees. The whole of Lithuania was annexed by the Soviet Union on 3 August 1940 following a June ultimatum from the Soviets demanding, among other things, that unspecified numbers of Red Army soldiers be allowed to enter the country for the purpose of helping to form a more pro-Soviet government. After the ultimatum was issued and Lithuania further occupied, a Soviet government was installed with Vilnius as the capital of the newly created Lithuanian SSR. Between 20,000 and 30,000 of the city's inhabitants were subsequently arrested by the NKVD and sent to gulags in the far eastern areas of the Soviet Union. On the 22nd of June 1941, the Germans launched Operation Barbarossa against the Soviet Union, while at the same time Lithuanians began the anti-Soviet June Uprising, organized by the Lithuanian Activist Front. Lithuanians proclaimed independence and organized the Provisional Government of Lithuania. This government quickly self-disbanded. Nazis captured Vilnius on 24 June 1941. Lithuania became part of the Reichskommissariat Ostland, German civil administration. Two ghettos were set up in the old town center for the large Jewish population, the smaller one of which was liquidated by October. The larger ghetto lasted until 1943, though its population was regularly deported in roundups known as Actionen. A forced labor camp was also set up behind the Vilnius town hall as a factory to produce winter clothing for the Wehrmacht and another one later for vehicle repair on 47 and 49 Subasius Street. A failed ghetto uprising on 1 September 1943 organized by the Fereinigte Partisaner Organization, was followed by the final destruction of the ghetto. During the Holocaust, about 95% of the 265,000 strong Jewish population of Lithuania was murdered by the German units and Lithuanian Nazi collaborators, many of them in Panerii, about 10 kilometers west of the old town center. In 1944, after the Nazis suffered losses in the Eastern Front and the Red Army was approaching, the Lithuanian Territorial Defense Force was established under the command of General Povilas Plechevicius. The LTDF mission was to defend the country within its borders against the Red Army and the Soviet partisans. On 1 April 1944, the LTDF battalions entered Vilnius and confronted the army of Krajowa, which attempted to capture the city before the Soviets. The AK tried to negotiate a non-aggression pact with Plechevicius, but the Lithuanian side demanded the Poles to abandon the Vilnius region or subordinate themselves to Lithuanians. The 19,500 men LTDF disbanded itself after refusing to transcend the Lithuanian border and to aid the Nazis in the Eastern Front. Many of the former LTDF members later formed the core of the Lithuanian partisans. In the Lithuanian SSR, Soviet Union. In July 1944, Vilnius was captured from the Germans by the Soviet Army and the town was once again incorporated into the Soviet Union as the capital of the Lithuanian SSR. The NKVD began repressions against the leaders of the Armia Krajowa and Lithuanians. The war had irreversibly altered the town. Most of the predominantly Polish and Jewish population had been repatriated and exterminated respectively, during and after the German occupation. Some members of the intelligentsia and partisan members hiding in the forest were now targeted and deported to Siberia after the war. The majority of the remaining population was compelled to move to communist Poland by 1946, and Sovietization began in earnest. From the late 1940s on Vilnius began to grow again, following an influx of Lithuanians, Poles and Belarusians from neighboring regions and throughout Lithuania as well as neighboring region of Grodno and from other more remote areas of the Soviet Union. On the previously rural outskirts as well as in the very vicinity of the old town, industrial areas were designed and large Soviet plants were built, following a program of industrialization. In November 1980, 
the number of inhabitants of Vilnius exceeded 500,000. Because of shortage of housing for a growing population of the city, large-scale microdistricts were built in the elderates of Antakalnis, Zermanai, Lazdanai, Karolinishkis, Versuliskis, Baltipii, Justiniskis, Pasilaceae, Fabigeniskis and on a smaller scale in other parts of Vilnius. These were connected with the central part as well as with industrial areas via expressway-like streets and by public transport, noticeably extensive network of trolleybuses. Independent Lithuania. On the 11th of March 1990, the Supreme Council of the Lithuanian SSR announced its secession from the Soviet Union and intention to restore an independent Republic of Lithuania. As a result of these declarations, on 9 January 1991, the Soviet Union sent in troops. This culminated in the 13 January attack on the state radio and television building and the Vilnius TV tower, killing at least 14 civilians and seriously injuring 700 more. The Soviet Union finally recognized Lithuanian independence in September 1991. The constitution, as did the earlier Lithuanian constitution of 1922, mentions that, the capital of the state of Lithuania shall be the city of Vilnius, the long-standing historical capital of Lithuania. Vilnius has been rapidly transforming, emerging as a modern European city. The majority of its historical buildings during the last 25 years had been renovated, and a business and commercial area is being developed into the new city center, that is expected to become the city's main administrative and business district on the north side of the Neris River. This area includes modern residential and retail space, with the municipality building and the 148.3 meters Europa Tower as its most prominent buildings. The construction of Swedbank's headquarters is symbolic of the importance of Scandinavian banks in Vilnius. The building complex Vilnius Business Harbor was built in 2008, and one of its towers is now the sixth tallest building in Lithuania. More buildings are scheduled for construction in the area. More than 75,000 new flats were built between 1995 and 2018, making Vilnius an absolute leader in construction sector in the Baltics of the last two decades. On average, 298,000 square meter or 3,246 flats are built each year. In 2015, there were 225,871 units in multi-story houses and 20,578 flats in single-family or duplex apartment houses, the share of such housing increasing from 6.9% in 2006 to 8.3% in 2015. The record numbers of flats were built in 2019 to 4,322 flats in multi-family residentials were built in Vilnius City Municipality and 817 flats were built in Vilnius Urban Zone in single-family detached houses, the later being the highest number in history. Vilnius was selected as a 2009 European Capital of Culture, along with Linz, the capital of Upper Austria. Its 2009 New Year's Eve celebration, marking the event, featured a light show said to be, visible from outer space. In preparation, the historical center of the city was restored, and its main monuments were renovated. The global economic crisis led to a drop in tourism which prevented many of the projects from reaching their planned extent, and allegations of corruption and incompetence were made against the organizers, while tax increases for cultural activity led to public protests and the general economic conditions sparked riots. In 2015 Remigius Samasius became the first directly elected mayor of the city. On the 28th to the 29th of November 2013, Vilnius hosted the Eastern Partnership Summit in the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania. Many European presidents, prime ministers and other high-ranking officials participated in the event. On the 29th of November 2013, Georgia and Moldova signed association and free trade agreements with the European Union. Previously, Ukraine and Armenia were also expected to sign the agreements but postponed the decision, sparking large protests in Ukraine. Geography. Vilnius is situated in southeastern Lithuania at the confluence of the Vilnia and Neris rivers. Multiple countries claims that the geographical center of Europe is located in their territories, however the only location with recognition in the Guinness Book of World Records is located near Vilnius. After a re-estimation of the boundaries of the continent of Europe in 1989, Jean George Affolder, a scientist at the Institut Géographique National determined that the geographic center of Europe is located at 54 degrees 54 and 25 degrees 19 e. The method used for calculating this point was that of the center of gravity of the geometrical figure of Europe. 
This point is located in Lithuania, near the village of Girija. A monument, composed by the sculptor Gediminas Jokubonis and consisting of a column of white granite surmounted by a crown of stars, was erected at the location in 2004. Vilnius lies 312 kilometers from the Baltic Sea and Klaipeda, the chief Lithuanian seaport. Vilnius is connected by highways to other major Lithuanian cities, such as Kaunas, Sholay and Panavezis. The area of Vilnius is 402 square kilometers. Buildings occupy 29.1% of the city. Green spaces occupy 68.8%, and waters occupy 2.1%. Nature Reserves Vilnius has eight protected nature reserves. Vokes Senslenio Slopes Geomorphological Reserve, Oxtagiris Geomorphological Reserve, Valakupiu Klonio Geomorphological Reserve, Verzuva Hydrographic Reserve, Vok Hydrographic Reserve, Sidronas Upstream Landscape Reserve, Tapliai Landscape Reserve and Seskine Slopes Geomorphological Reserve. Climate. The climate of Vilnius is humid continental. Temperature records have been kept since 1777. The average annual temperature is 7.3 degrees Celsius. In January the average temperature is minus 3.9 degrees Celsius, in July it is 18.7 degrees Celsius. The average precipitation is about 691 millimeters per year. Average annual temperatures in the city have increased significantly during the last 30 years. A change which the Lithuanian Hydrometeorological Service attributes to global warming induced by human activities. Summer days are pleasantly warm and sometimes hot, especially in July and August with temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius throughout the day during periodic heat waves. Nightlife in Vilnius is in full swing at this time of year, and outdoor bars, restaurants and cafes become very popular during the daytime. Winters can be very cold, with temperatures rarely reaching above freezing. Temperatures below minus 25 degrees Celsius are not unheard of in January and February. Vilnius's rivers freeze over in particularly cold winters, and the lakes surrounding the city are almost always permanently frozen during this time of year. A popular pastime is ice fishing. The Lithuanian Hydrometeorological Service is headquartered in Vilnius and monitors climate of Vilnius and Lithuania. Culture, Painting and Sculpture For centuries, Vilnius as a capital city was an art center of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and has attracted artists from all across Europe. The oldest works of art which remain from the early Gothic period are paintings dedicated to churches and liturgy. Walls paintings from the 16th centuries were also discovered in Vilnius. Gothic wooden, mostly polychrome sculptures were used to decorate the altars of the churches of Vilnius. Some Gothic seals from the 14 to 15 th centuries remain till the nowadays. In the early 16th century, the Renaissance sculptures appeared, which were mostly created by Italian sculptors. Bernardinus Zanobi da Gianodi, Giovanni Sini, Giovanni Maria Padovano. In the Renaissance period, portrait tombstones and medals were highly valued. The works of Italian sculptors are characterized by a naturalistic treatment of forms, precise proportions, tectonicity, a realistic representation of the deceased. The local sculptors took over only the iconographic scheme of the Renaissance tomb. Their works are characterized by conditionality of forms, stylization. During this period local and Western European painters created religious, mythologic compositions, portraits, which were intertwined with late Gothic and Baroque features. Illustrated prayer books illustrations and miniatures have survived. The Baroque period which began in the late 16th century was exceptional for Vilnius as wall painting blossomed in the city. Most of the palaces and churches were decorated with frescoes characterized by bright colors, sophisticated angles and dramatism style. Also during this period the secular painting spread. Representational, imaginative, epitaph portraits, scenes of battles, politically important events. It is characterized by detailed realistic style. This period sculptures dominated in the sacred architecture, made of wood, marble and stucco. Italian sculptors were exceptionally important in the 17th century Grand Duchy sculptures development and were invited there by the Lithuanian nobility. Their works are characterized by the features of mature Baroque, expressiveness of forms, sensuality, a tectonic composition. The local sculptors emphasized the decorative features of the Baroque, and the expressiveness and emotionality of the Baroque was less characteristic in their works. At the late 18th and 19th centuries, 
The Lithuanian painting was largely influenced by the Vilnius Art School which introduced manifestations of Classicism art and later of Romanticism art. The painters had internships abroad, mainly in Italy. Painting of allegorical, mythological compositions, landscapes, portraits of representatives of various circles of society was begun. Historical themes prevailed. The most famous Classicism painters from this time are Franciscus Smuglevicius, Jan Rustam, Uazipas Oleskovicius, Danielius Kondratovicius, Uazipas Pesca, Vincentus Smokowskis. While the Romanticism art is characterized by Jan Rustam, Jonas Demelis, Vincentas Demachowskis, Kanudas Ruseka's works. After the closure of Vilnius University in 1832, the artistic direction formed by the representatives of the Vilnius Art School influenced the further development of Lithuanian art. Development of art in the first half of the 20th century was promoted by activities and exhibitions of the Lithuanian Art Society, established in 1907 by Petras Rimsa, Antanas Zamudzinovicius, Antanas Jarosevicius, and Vilnius Art Society, established in 1908. This period is characterized by Jonas Sileka, Justinas Vienazinskis, Jonas Makevicius, Vytatas Kyrakstis, Vytatas Pranas Basiunas works. They continued the traditions of Western European styles and followed the modernism art directions. Although, after the World War II the method of socialist realism was introduced, propaganda paintings, compositions of historical, household genre, still lifes, landscapes, portraits and sculptures. The most notable late 20th and 21st centuries Vilnian painters are Zygimantas Augustinas, Egil Ridikaite, Egil Geniadite, Patrizia Yurkseadite, Jurga Berilite, Solomonas Teitelbamas. Many prominent art galleries are located in Vilnius. Lithuania's largest art collection is housed in the Lithuanian Art Museum. One branch of it, the Vilnius Picture Gallery in the Vilnius Old Town, houses a collection of Lithuanian art from the 16th to the beginning of the 20th century. On the other side of the Neris, the National Art Gallery holds a permanent exhibition on Lithuanian 20th century art, as well as numerous exhibitions on modern art. The Contemporary Art Center is the largest venue for contemporary art in the Baltic states, with an exhibition space of 2,400 square meters. The center is a non-collection-based institution committed to developing a broad range of international and Lithuanian exhibition projects as well as presenting a wide range of public programs including lectures, seminars, performances, film and video screenings, and live new music events. On the 10th of November 2007, the Jonas Mikas Visual Arts Center was opened by avant-garde filmmaker Jonas Mikas with its premier exhibition entitled The Avant-Garde, From Futurism to Fluxus. In 2018, the Mo Museum was opened and is a personal initiative of Lithuanian scientists and philanthropists Donguole and Viktoras Butkis. Its collection of 5,000 modern and contemporary pieces contains major Lithuanian artworks from the 1950s to this day. The Uzupas district near the Old Town, which used to be one of the more run-down districts of Vilnius during the Soviet era, is home to a movement of Bohemian artists, who operate numerous art galleries and workshops. Uzupas declared itself an independent republic on April Fool's Day in 1997. In the main square, the statue of an angel blowing a trumpet stands as a symbol of artistic freedom. In 1995, the world's first bronze cast of Frank Zappa was installed in the Najemistis district with the permission of the government. The Frank Zappa sculpture confirmed the newly found freedom of expression and marked the beginning of a new era for Lithuanian society. In 2015, the project of Vilnius Talking Statues was realized. 18 statues around Vilnius interact with visitors in multiple languages by a telephone call to a smartphone. Literature. About 1520, Francis Skarina, who is the author of the first Ruthenian Bible, established a printing house in Vilnius, the first in Eastern Europe. In 1522, he prepared and published the first printed book of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, titled The Little Traveler's Book. In 1525, he printed the Acts and Epistles of the Apostles. The Vilnius Academy Press was established in 1575 by the Lithuanian noble Mikołaj Krzysztof, the orphan, Radziwill as the printing house of the Vilnius Academy. He delegated the management of the printing house to the Jesuits. In May 1576, it published its first book Pro Sacratissima Eucharistia Contra Harrisum Zwinglianum by Peter Skarga.
The Vilnius Academy Press situation was exceptional because its activities were funded by the secular society, the Lithuanian nobility and the church. In 1805, Józef Zawadzki bought the Vilnius Academy Press and founded the Józef Zawadzki printing shop which continuously worked till 1939 and published books in multiple languages. The first poetry book of Adam Mickiewicz was published there in 1822. One of the creators of Lithuanian writing, Mikologis Doxa, translated and published the Catechism by Spanish Jesuit theologist Jacobo Ledesma in 1595 this was the first printed Lithuanian language book in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. He also translated and published the Jakub Vujek's Postila Catholica in 1599. Many famous writers were born, lived in Vilnius or are alumnus of the Vilnius University. The first consideration of the first statute of Lithuania took place in 1522 at the Simas of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania in Vilnius. The Statute of Lithuania has been drafted under the guidance of Grand Chancellor of Lithuania Albertus Gostautas and in accordance with the court's jurisprudence formed by customary law, heads of state legislation on certain matters and by the provisions of the canon law and Roman law regulations. It is the first official codification of this kind of secular law in Europe. Lithuanian nationalist Albertus Gostautas actively supported the Lithuanian language usage in the Lithuanian literature and protected Lithuanian authors including Abroomas Kulvietis and Michael the Lithuanian, who criticized the usage of Old Slavonic church language and called refugees old believers as the Muscovian spies in his book De Moribus Tartarorum, Lituanorum et Moscorum. Since the 16th century, the Lithuanian metrica was kept at the lower castle and safeguarded by the state chancellor. Due to the deterioration of the books, the state grand chancellor, Lou Sapieha, ordered the volumes of the metrica to be recopied in 1594. The recopying process continued until 1607. The newly recopied books were inventoried, rechecked, and transferred to a separate building in Vilnius, with the older books remaining in the castle of Vilnius. According to the 1983 data, 665 books have remained till the nowadays and their microfilms are preserved at the Lithuanian State Historical Archives in Vilnius. Over 200 tiles and commemorative plaques to writers, who have lived and worked in Vilnius, and foreign authors, who have shared a connection with Vilnius and Lithuania, adorn walls on Literata Street in the Old Town, presenting a broad overview of the history of Lithuanian literature. The Institute of Lithuanian Literature and Folklore and the Lithuanian Writers' Union are located in Vilnius. The biggest book fair in Baltic states is annually held in Vilnius at LITEXPO, the Baltic's biggest exhibition center. Cinema the very first public film session in Vilnius was held in the Botanical Garden in the summer of 1897. It is notable that such an event was held in Vilnius soon after the very first film sessions in the world by Auguste and Louis Lumière, who held it in Paris in 1895. Vilnius film session also showed the Lumière brothers' documentary movies. Firstly shown movies were educational and were filmed in exotic locations and introduced different cultures to Vilnians who enjoyed the movies because very few were able to visit such far places. Georges Melise's movie A Trip to the Moon was first shown in the non-stationary Lucas Square movie theater in 1902 and was the first feature film shown in Vilnius. First stationary movie theater in Vilnius named Iliuzija was opened in 1905 and was located in Digioji Street 60. First movie theaters reminded theaters buildings and had boxes with more expensive tickets. Also, because there was no sound in the first movies, the sessions had a live orchestral or musicians' performances. On stage, cinema screening was sometimes mixed with theatrical performances, illusion shows. On the 4th of June 1924, Vilnius Magistrate established a popular 1,200-seat movie theater in the City Hall, which in Polish was called Mieski Kinematograph. The purpose of this cinema was to provide cultural education for students and adults. The popularity of this cinema is evidenced by the numbers of viewers in 1,926 to 502,261 tickets were sold, 24,242 tickets were given free to boarding children, 778 to Vilnius guests and 8,385 to soldiers. In 1939, the Lithuanian authorities renamed it to Milda. In 1940, the last city government handed over the premises to the People's Commissariat of Education, which established the Lithuanian National Philharmonic Society there. In 1965, the most modern movie theater in Lithuania called Lietuva was opened in Vilnius, 
which annually had over 1.84 million visitors and profit of over 1 million Soviet rubles. After the reconstruction, it had one of the largest screens in Europe. Though, it was closed in 2002, demolished in 2017 and the Mo Museum was built instead of it. Vilnius Film Festival Kino Pavasaris is the biggest and most important cinema event in Lithuania with international guests and thousands of visitors. Lithuanian Film Center, which main task is to promote the development and competitiveness of the Lithuanian film industry, headquarters are in Vilnius. Music. Musicians were presented at the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania as early as the 14th century as Grand Duke Gedimina's daughter Aldona of Lithuania already was a large sympathizer of music and took court musicians, singers with her to Krakow after marrying King Casimir III the Great. In the 16th century Vilnius for some time in their lives was a hometown of composer Wakla of Samatuli, lutenist virtuoso Balint Bakfark, composer Jan Brandt. The first textbook of music in Lithuania, the art and practice of music was issued in Vilnius by Zygimantas Liauxminas in 1667. Italian artists organized the first opera in Lithuania on 4 September 1636 at the Palace of the Grand Dukes by the order of Grand Duke Władysław IV Vesa. Operas are staged at the Lithuanian National Opera and Ballet Theatre and also by independent troupe Vilnius City Opera. The Lithuanian National Philharmonic Society is the largest and oldest state-owned concert organization in Lithuania, whose main activity is to organize and coordinate live concerts, diverse classical, classical contemporary, jazz music events and tours throughout Lithuania and abroad. The Lithuanian State Symphony Orchestra, founded by Gintaras Rinkovičius, every year builds up a wide-ranging repertoire, introduces exceptional programs, and invites young talent to perform along with recognized soloists. In Lithuania, choral music is very important. Vilnius is the only city with three choirs laureates at the European Grand Prix for choral singing. There is a long-standing tradition of the Danus Vente. Since 1990, the festival has been organized every four years and summons roughly 30,000 singers and folk dancers of various professional levels and age groups from across the country in Vingus Park. In 2008, Lithuanian Song and Dance Festival together with its Latvian and Estonian versions was inscribed as UNESCO Masterpiece of the Oral and Intangible Heritage of Humanity. Jazz scene was active even during the years of Soviet occupation. The real breakthrough would occur in 1970-71 with the coming together of the Ganilin, Tarasov, Chekhasin trio, the alleged instigators of the Vilnius Jazz School. Most known annual event of jazz in the city is the Vilnius Jazz Festival. Gatva's Musikos Dina gathers musicians of various genres annually in the streets of Vilnius. Vilnius is the birthplace of many prominent music personalities. Singers, composers, conductors, musicians. Vilnius was a hometown of such 18th-century composers as Michal Kazimierz Zaginski, Johann David Holland, Maciej Radziwill, Michal Klefa Zaginski. 19th century Vilnius was famous for such European scale performers as singer Christina Gerhardi Frank, a close friend of Mozart and Haydn, guitarist virtuoso Marek Konrad Sokolowski, recognized as the best guitarist in Europe in the mid 19th century, composer Stanislaw Moniusko, the father of Polish national opera. The wealthiest woman in the early 19th century Vilnius was singer Maria Daneri. In the early 20th century, Vilnius was a hometown of Michelogis Konstantinas Celianus. Musicians of late 20th and early 21st centuries include Vyacheslav Ganilin, Petras Vysnauskas, Petras Geniuses, Musa Rubakite, Alanas Chazna, Marionas Makutovicis. Lithuanian Academy of Music and Theatre is headquartered in Gediminas Avenue and also has its department at the Slushko Palace in Antakalnis. Many accomplished singers have lectured at the Academy, including the internationally famous tenors Kipras Petrauskas and Virgilius Noreka. Theater, Lithuanian Grand Duke's entertainment at the castle, rulers' visits abroad and the honorable guests' arrival meetings etiquette had theatrical elements already since the 14th century. During the period of Sigismund III Vase's residence in Vilnius, English professional drama actors' troops played in the royal manor. In 1635, Władysław IV Vesa established a professional opera theater in the Lower Castle, where drama per musica genre productions were performed with opera's librettos being written by Italian Virgilio Puccitelli. The performances were characterized by fundamental, luxurious scenography. Between the 16th and 18th centuries there was a Jesuit school theater in Lithuania. 
In 1570, the first performance was shown in Vilnius. Baroque aesthetics prevailed in the Jesuit school theater, but it also had Middle Ages retrospectives, Renaissance elements, Rococo motifs, and served an educational function. The performances were played in Latin, however elements of the Lithuanian language were also included in intermediates and prologues, and some of the works were Lithuanian-themed. In 1785, Wojciech Bogoslawski established the city's first public theater Vilnius City Theater. The theater was initially located in the Oskirka Palace, but later moved to the Radziwill Palace in the Vilnius Town Hall. Until 1845 the plays were performed in Polish, from 1845 in Polish and Russian and from 1864 only in Russian. After the ban on the Lithuanian language was lifted, the plays were also performed in Lithuanian. The theater ceased to exist in 1914. During the interwar, then part of Poland, Vilnius was famous for the most modern in the region experimental Reduta Truppen Institute, led by Julius Osterwa. In Vilnius and the Vilnius region, the performances by the Vilnius Lithuanian Stage Amateur Company, established in 1930, were shown. In 1945, it was merged to the Lithuanian National Drama Theatre. After the USSR occupation of Lithuania in 1940, Theater became one of the means of disseminating the Soviet ideology and censorship of repertoires was introduced. The performances incorporated the principles of socialist realism and a number of revolutionary plays were staged by the Russian authors. A repertory commission was established under the Ministry of Culture to direct theaters, control their repertoires, grant permissions to perform or ban performances. Socialist realism was the only recognized direction. After the restoration of independence of Lithuania, theater changed cardinally and sought to recreate a broken dialogue with spectators. Vilnius City Opera, an independent opera theater in Vilnius, blends classical with contemporary art. While the Lithuanian National Drama Theater, State Small Theater of Vilnius, State Youth Theater and a number of private theater companies, including OKT, Vilnius City Theater, Anzalika Cholina Dance Theater and others, show classical, modern and Lithuanian playwriting directed by world-known Lithuanian and foreign directors. There also is a Russian-language theater Russian Drama Theater of Lithuania. Photography. The beginning of Lithuanian photography is considered to be the daguerreotyping of the reconstructed Verkiai Palace, which was performed in the summer of 1839 by François Marcelac, the governor of the children of Duke Ludwig Wittgenstein, this fact is mentioned in the memoirs of architect Bolesław Pachazinski published in January 1853 in the Gazeta Warszawska newspaper. The unfavorable political situation in the country led to the slow development of new technology and cultural activities. The first known daguerreotype portrait atelier in Vilnius was opened in 1843 by C. Ziegler. Such ateliers operated in Lithuania until 1859. One of the most famous photographers was K. Newpert, who came from Norway. In the 1860s with the spread of negative and positive collodion technology, glass negatives and albumin paper were used instead of daguerreotype plates, photo portraits of standardized formats became widespread and commercial photography ateliers were established in Vilnius and other Lithuanian cities. The first landscape and architectural photographs were created by Vilnius photographers Abdenas Korzonas and Albert Swiakowski, who compiled the first set of photographs in Lithuania, the Vilnius album. In 1862, the provisional censorship regulations were adopted, which determined the activities of photographic institutions. They were supervised by the Central Press Board of the Ministry of the Interior. Photographers' ateliers who participated in the January uprising and photographed the rebels were closed, their images were annihilated and the authors were punished. Other prominent photographers of the 19th century were Stanislaw Filibert Fleury, Alexander Władysław Strauss, Józef Czakowicz. One of the most important facts about the use of photography for scientific purposes is the second photo heliograph in the world installed in 1865 at the Vilnius University Astronomical Observatory, which was used to observe and photograph the sunspots. Since 1868, for the first time in the world, a systematic photographic service of sunspots dynamics was launched in Vilnius. In 1927, Jan Bullock in Vilnius established the first photography club in the present territory of Lithuania. In 1952, the editorial office of Sviteris magazine organized the first photography exhibition in Vilnius, the main object of which was photography itself. Crafts. 
Iron tools, weapons, brass, glass and silver jewelry have been produced in the present territory of Lithuania since the first century. Later pottery and production of wood products became widespread, and weaving in the second and fourth centuries. During the period of feudalism, home crafts were the most significant in the conditions of subsistence economy. In the 13th and 14th centuries, the separation of crafts from agriculture accelerated. Crafts have become an independent branch of the economy. The Grand Dukes of Lithuania promoted the development of crafts in cities. Weaving, shoemaking, fur making and other crafts predominated. With the introduction of foreign artisans, the development of crafts accelerated even further. The development of crafts and trade stimulated the growth of Vilnius and other Lithuanian cities. In the 14th and 15th centuries, crafts were already highly specialized and at the same time workshops were established, which trained and defended the interests of craftsmen. In the 16th century, the production of fine glassware began, goldsmithing was developed, and the level of pottery and weaving crafts rose. The statutes of Lithuania mention 25 crafts. Prominent European goldsmiths worked in the Vilnius Goldsmiths Workshop, which controlled the trade of precious metals, gemstones and stood out for its wealth as it serviced the territory up to Dagava and Dnieper rivers, as well as the Catholic Church in Lithuania, the manor of the Grand Duke, nobility, townspeople. No less important was the Vilnius Mint, which was the main mint of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and minted the Lithuanian denarius, shillings, groschens, tallers, ducats, and other coins from 1387 to 1666. In the second half of the 17th century, due to the economic turmoil caused by the Russo-Polish War, crafts declined, most of the goods were imported from abroad duty free by Zalokta Lithuanian and Polish nobles and sold on their holdings. Crafts began to rise again in the second half of the 18th century to the first half of the 19th century and Vilnius was the largest Lithuanian craft center. After the abolition of serfdom, craft schools were established in the Lithuanian cities. The growing industry began to push crafts from some areas of food processing, textiles and metalworking. However, crafts have long prevailed in clothing manufacturing, goldsmithing, wood, food processing, and other fields. During the years of Soviet occupation, craftsmen worked in artels, after their abolition, in household service combines. After the restoration of Lithuania's independence, crafts complemented small and medium-sized businesses. Language. As a historically multicultural capital, many languages' statuses changed over the centuries in the history of Vilnius. The predominant language of public life in medieval Lithuania was Lithuanian. It was spoken by people living in the ethnopolitical center of the state, ethnic Lithuania, including the ruler's manor and the most prominent Lithuanian nobility. However, the Lithuanian language had no literary traditions and was not used in writing, except for the most important religious texts. Although, the importance of the spoken Lithuanian language remained for centuries because it is known that even Vytautas the Great himself knew and spoke in the Lithuanian language with Władysław II Jagiello, whose son Casimir IV Jagellon also spoke in the Lithuanian language. The word about the Lithuanian language spread wide, as even the Byzantine Greek historian Leonikos Chakokondiles in the 15th century knew that the Lithuanians had their own distinct language. The Ruthenian language was used in Lithuania and its capital Vilnius due to the incorporation of the Kievan Rus lands. In colloquial form, these dialects formed the basis of the Ukrainian and Byelorussian languages in the 19th century. The written form of the Ruthenian language formed from the interaction of the ancient Slavic language with the local elements of the Ruthenian language. Such a Ruthenian language became the main language of the Chancery of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania in the 14th and 15th centuries and maintained its dominant position until the middle of the 17th century. Latin and Polish were also widely used in the Chancery of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. In the second part of the 17th century, the Polish language ousted the Ruthenian language from the written sources and the Lithuanian language from most areas of the public life. The first state documents in the Lithuanian language appeared in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania only at the very end of its existence. In 1552, Grand Duke Sigismund II Augustus ordered that orders of the Magistrate of Vilnius be announced in Lithuanian, Polish, and Ruthenian languages. Minorities were under the guardianship of the Grand Duke of Lithuania, but their languages were only used among themselves and never gained a significant role. The second and third statutes of Lithuania consolidated Lithuanian Jews' status as non-Christian and common human. 
According to the 14th article of the Modern Constitution of Lithuania, the Lithuanian language is the only official language in the state. Therefore, all the official procedures in Vilnius must be preceded in the Lithuanian language, however interpreter assistance is guaranteed by the state in some cases. Lithuanians speak on average of 2.7 languages, and 97.3% of the population speaks at least one foreign language. Fashion. It is known that the Vilnians have enjoyed to expensively dress up since the Middle Ages. According to historian Antanas Kaplinskas, even the merchants and craftsmen wives were wearing multiple rings decorated with gemstones. Those who did not dress up and did not follow the fashion trends were even ridiculed. Property inventories of 16th-17th centuries often mention expensive clothing, such as long, wide-sleeved jackets of precious materials, known as kontush, and zupins decorated with lynxes or other animal fur, also kontush belts. Special attention was paid to the buttons as in the list of one nobleman's property Kaplinskas found 12 buttons with pearls and corals, about 100 large buttons with diamonds, plum-shaped buttons decorated with enamel, as well as buttons made from brilliants, emeralds. Delias and dolmens were also popular among the townspeople and nobles. Wealthy townspeople, decorated with luxurious clothing, raised the envy of the Lithuanian nobility and the nobles demanded the adoption of laws limiting the clothing of the townspeople. For the first time such restrictions were recorded in the Statute of Lithuania of 1588, according to which the townspeople were allowed to wear only two rings while Jews were forbidden to adorn with gold chains and brooches. Even wider restrictions were put in place by the same of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth which adopted the Act of Thrift in 1613, according to which the non-noble townspeople were forbidden to appear in public places dressed in expensive furs. The wealthy townspeople were not satisfied with such limitations, therefore a subscription fee was introduced later which removed all limitations. The clothing trends changed in the late 18th century when almost all men already had shaved beards, short-haired hairstyles and began to wear trendy, blue, green or black tailcoats with open fronts and waistcoats matched with white or yellowish trousers, while the 18th century women's clothing fashion had almost no differences from the Western European fashion trends. In the early 20th century the clothes were already in line with the Western European fashion trends, and in 1961 clothing designers studies were launched in the State Art Institute of Lithuania, also in the same year the Vilnius Model House was established which created and popularized unique and industrial apparel and footwear models, made clothing presentations. Mato's Infexia was launched in 1999 and is the biggest Lithuanian fashion show, held every spring in Vilnius. Prominent Lithuanian clothing designer Juazas Statkovicius usually organizes his collections presentations in Vilnius. Holidays and festivals. As a result of centuries-long Catholic traditions in Vilnius and Lithuania, the Catholic holidays are widely celebrated and employees have a days off. Every year on the 16th of February and on the 11th of March festive events are organized in Vilnius with official ceremonies conducted by the heads of state and the holy masses of the Lithuanian Catholic Church in the Vilnius Cathedral. While in the evening of the 12th of January bonfires are ignited to mark the bloody January events. St. Casimir's Fair has been held annually for hundreds of years in the city's markets and streets on the Sunday nearest to the 4th of March, the anniversary of St. Casimir's death. It attracts tens of thousands of visitors and many Lithuanian and foreign craftsmen. Easter palms are one of the most recognizable symbols of the fair. Capitals Days is the biggest festival of music and culture held in the city annually for three days. Although it is not a national holiday, the Vilnia River is dyed green every year for St. Patrick's Day.